Hello friends, today we are going to talk about loops. Specifically, we are going to look at six different ways of looping in Haskell. Now, some of these ways are unique to Haskell, but you should be able to implement many of them in your favorite programming language, which supports functional style programming. Now, without much further ado, let's begin. We are going to take an example problem where you are given a list of integers and you need to return a list of them squared. Now, if you do it in a non-functional way, your code will probably look like this. We have a square function which takes in an integer and returns its square. In the actual looping logic, we first define the container in which we are going to store the results of looping operation. In this case, it's simply the list. Since we loop from beginning to end of the list in each iteration, we retrieve the element of the list pass it onto the square function and add the result back into our output list. In the end, we simply return the output list. Let's see how we can do this in Haskell in different ways. Probably the worst way of doing it is mimicking the for loop we saw earlier. Let's define a function called mimic for loop. It takes an input list of integers and produces an output list of integers. So for some input integer ends, we first define the list of values that our loop variable can take from 0 to length of n's minus 1. Then we define a lambda function which takes that loop variable i, uses it as an index to get the ith element from the input list and pass to sq function. In order to actually loop, we can use the map function which will do this for all i values in the range we have defined. This function compiles. And if we invoke it with an input list of integers from say 1 to 10, then we get back a list of them squared. That was horrible. Let's try to improve this code. Remember the map function from before? If you look at the type signature of map function, you will see that it takes a list of elements as its second input and a function which transforms an element of that list into something else as the first input. It will then apply that function to all the elements of the input list and collect the transform values into an output list. Let's call this function mapping iteration and its definition is simply map sqns. Let's verify that our code still compiles and try the same input as before and indeed we still get the same output. Our next method of iterating on a list involves the use of scanning functions. Let's first understand how scanning a list works. You begin with a list and an accumulator with some initial value and a binary operation. Then scan function repeatedly applies the binary operations to all the values of the list and keeps on accumulating the result into another list. In the end, you output the final list. What you just saw was the left scanning function or scanl. Note that we don't have to use the accumulator value in the binary operation if we don't want to. Let's call our function scanning iteration. We can start with our input list and any integer accumulator value such as 1. And for the binary operation, we disregard the accumulator and simply square the second argument which is the integer coming from the list. In the end, we simply discard the head of the list which is just our starting accumulator value and the final list is our input list squared which is what we wanted. Let's compile and run it on our usual input and we can see that it still works correctly. And that was the end of part 1 of this series. In the next video, we are going to look at the remaining methods of looping in Haskell such as list comprehension, zipping and monadic iteration. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe for more videos like these coming soon. As always, thank you for watching.